It's good to be back in Region 2. When I was a boy growing up in Demerara, Region 2 was a very far off place to me. In fact, my only introduction to Essequibo was through a program called Hello Essequibo. Now, those of you who are my vintage would, would remember that, but many of you young people wouldn't. And then there was a famous book written by a Welshman called Gerald Durrell, who wrote a very entertaining book called Three Singles to Adventure. And for those of you who haven't read this, I insist that you do. Because it adds, not that Essequibo needs any addition to spice it up, but it adds a romanticism to the Cinderella County, which I've always found very alluring. It's wonderful again to be back on the banks of the Pomeroon, and this time for a particularly pleasurable occasion. You heard your REO quite rightly talk about the role education plays. Our country is barely 50 years old. We are the children of our indigenous peoples. We are the children of ex-slaves. We are the children of indentured laborers. We have come from many places to Guyana in circumstances that haven't always been the best. And as we begin to come of age at 50, many of us are without the kinds of inheritances that others can claim around the world. Education offers us an opportunity to equalize that equation. Education offers to open doors to us that would ordinarily be closed. What we have inherited here in Guyana, though, is a country that's replete with natural resources, a country that has really quite unsurpassed beauty. If you were to just look to my right, you need no other indication of how beautiful our country is. But the promise of those natural resources, the promise of more of our coastlanders enjoying the beauty of our hinterland, will continue to elude us unless we educate ourselves. So when President David Arthur Granger announced that those, of, those who were fortunate to be invited to his 70th birthday party, he said to them, hold the frankincense and myrrh, give me boats instead. I thought that this was quite appropriate. And so CGX Energy, of which I'm fortunate to be the co-chairman, immediately set about to ensure that we were one of the very first people to sign on to this vision. Because like all of you, I have seen the children paddling to school. And as the president says, when they get there, they're too tired to learn. They have to paddle back home. Without, educate, without investment in our education, the future of this country is highly uncertain. And so anything that we do to add to this investment is crucial. The provision of a boat, though, is a very small thing. The only way we will get to the goals that we need to have is by ensuring a number of things. One recommitment of our parents and teachers to the dream of an entirely, entirely literate population. It's not just the teaching system, it is the commitment of parents and entire communities. Ensuring that our public school buildings are taken care of, as the REO said, as public goods. Places that is a shared ownership places that we have to ensure each and every one of us has a responsibility to ensure those places aren't destroyed and they're maintained. And the same thing with this tiny little boat. Ensure that it is taken care of, it's kept in good repair, because when those students who use it now would have gone on to high school, in Georgetown perhaps, or even overseas to study, 
remember that there are others who will take your place and so we must take care of the things that we have. I can't say enough about the role education played in my own life. I grew up in an extremely poor family and education has allowed me to see most of the world. I can assure you that if I can do it, and I was not a very bright student at school, I can assure you that every one of you can also do it. It's really, really important though, that as you become educated, you don't forget where you came from. It's very important that you remember the Pomeroon, that you remember Region 2, you remember charity, you remember those things that ground you as Guyanese. Because unless you do, no amount of education can result in your success. Success is determined not by how many cars you buy, but by what kind of a quality of life you live. And education plays a large role. It is not only so we can afford better things, which will happen. It is also that we can begin to appreciate good literature we can begin to appreciate the arts. We can begin to appreciate the widest scope of our world within an educated context. And without this, without this, you're, we're blind. We live very limited lives. So I want to encourage you, please, CGX Energy is happy to play this role today. We see it as a small role. For the past five years, we have been investing in education. As a company working in the natural resource sector, I think this latest investment brings us to about 750,000 US over five years of investing in our educational sector. We see this obviously as a priority for us. In addition to this boat, we are this week also donating a canteen to students at the Providence Primary in Herstelling, which is where I went to school. Many of our schools have a need to ensure that our students have safe and sanitary areas to eat and that they're not buying from vendors who are in little shacks. There's much to do. And I want to directly challenge my fellow corporate citizens to adopt what we have done today let us ensure that we have a few hundred MV David Grangers that are taking students to school. Before I go, I want to say that once again, it's so nice to be in Region 2. As you know, one of the th many of you may know, I'm also heavily involved in the building of the cereal factory in Anna Regina. Which, for which the building has been completed. Now this is a Government of Guyana project and we are now installing the machinery. So, so Region 2 has continued to be a destination for me under the various hats that I wear. And I want to thank all of you for being such lovely and wonderful people. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you for the kind introduction. And um, I'd like to thank you personally for um, your remarks, Mrs. C. Passad. Thank the children who welcomed me along the roadway. Thank you all for coming away from school early this afternoon. I know you would prefer to be in school. <laughs> Uh, Madam Chairperson, Ms. Hercules, 
Minister of Social Cohesion, Ms. Amna Ali, Member of Parliament for the Pamaroon Supernam Region, Mr. Rajkumar, Regional Executive Officer, Mr. Hopkinson, Citizens, Mr. Alfro Alfonso, Mr. Kobal Singh, Professor Suresh Narayan, officials of the Pamaroon Supernam region, students from here, charity from Martindale, from the secondary school, members of the media, residents of Region 2. I'm back in charity. And as long as you all keep getting votes, I'll keep coming back. So if you want to see me again, all you have to say is, come, we got another boat. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. I know the sun is warm. And um, I would just like to make some very brief comments. First of all, to thank CGX and Professor Suresh Narayan for this gift. Um, it is no longer a singular or unique gift. We want to ensure that children everywhere in Guyana can get to school. And in Pomeroon, the highway is the river. Yeah. So if you want to get the children to school, you have to get river boats. Yeah. So thank you very much, Professor Narayan. It follows, of course, on the gifts by Mr. Komal Singh and Mr. Alfro Alfonso. And I'm sure it is a pace setter. There'll be more and more boats until every single child in the Pomeroon could find a place on the boat. But I want to mention three things very briefly. First of all is our country. Beautiful country, beautiful people. But this very region too, this very Pomeroon Supernam is claimed by other people. You all live here, your grandfather live here, you grew up here, you know it's ours. But still people intend for 50 years to claim this territory, this same region too. Five regions they claim. Can you imagine Mexico claiming 25 states of the United States of America? Well, the Venezuelans are claiming five of Guyana's 10 regions. You think I could, I could put you all under Maduro to live? No way. No, way. no way. No compromise. No compromise. This is ours. Yeah. And we have to continue to make sure this country is well developed, that you all are well educated, so that Guyana remains ours. Not only what we got from our foreparents, but what we'll pass on to our grandparents. Yeah. So, this is our job. And your job is to inherit what we shall bequeath to you. That's why we are so concerned about you. So this threat that the Venezuelans are posing is not something we must dismiss. Because in 1966, the same year we became independent, they jumped and seized Ancoco. And up to now, they're still holding on to Ancoco. So they have some politicians who want to give them more. They get enough. In 1899, the tribunal gave Venezuela 13,000 square kilometers, an area bigger than Jamaica. They already got, it's greedy, the greedy, they want more. Well, not a kuras. <laughs> not one, not one kuras. So children, this is yours to inherit. Big people, this is yours to protect. All Guyanese, we must stand up for Guyana and ensure that what we inherited is the same thing we passed down. The second thing I want to mention is charity. Charity begins home, right? Home begins at charity too, you know. I've come here and I love this community. But you know, I want charity to become a green tongue. All this styrofoam and plastic, y'all got here? Bad news. This is a, an important part of the Pomeroon Supernam region. It is a hub. It is a commercial center. 
A lot of the smuggling in this region takes place through charity. <laughs> Wait, y'all ain't clapping? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, I, I'm not interested in smuggling. I'm interested in legitimate trade. But I want charity to become an important commercial hub so that children from the Pomeroon, upper and lower Pomeroon, children from the coast, could look forward to establishing legitimate businesses we already export important commodities through charity. I want charity to grow and develop, exporting not only um, coconut oil, but also exporting coconut water, all the ground provisions coming out of the, out of the river. I want you all to embark on agro-processing. Instead of bringing out cassava and planting and sweet potatoes, start exporting cassava chips. Start exporting planting chips. The Barbados, the Barbados would eat everything you all produce. <laughs> now on the 3rd of October, it was called National Tree Day. And the first Saturday every October will be National Tree Day. And I was at Bartica because I grew up there. But because I want Bartica to become one of the centers, it's called the gateway to the hinterland. And we worked out, there are 15,000 residents of Bartica. If five people live in one household, you have how many households? If you have 15,000 people and five people in one household, how many households? You not got cell phone, no, you can't calculate. You can't calculate. But we calculated. That if every household in Bartica had one breadfruit tree, Bartica alone could produce a million pounds of breadfruit every year. So that is the importance of National Tree Day, and that's the importance of trees. That's the importance of the Pomeroon. Because you all got the best coconut water in the entire Western Hemisphere. You all know that? I got a friend, I tell you, I tell you the story already, he gone to live in Georgetown, but he carried Pomeroon coconut tree to plant. <laughs> you don't trust Georgetown coconut tree. The point is, my brothers and sisters, boys and girls, the Pomeroon is a potential food bowl, and anything you produce could be exported to the Caribbean. So I want you to ensure that this charity becomes a commercial hub, buying produce from the river and selling produce to the Caribbean. The third thing I like to mention is the most important thing. I'm here because of you children. I know Professor Narayan has made a contribution by getting triplets. I don't know, he's a CGX, he's a professor, he's doing all, and he's still got time to make triplets. <laughs> But we need more professional Ryans producing more and more Guyanese children. That's an easy job. But it's important for you to pay attention to what he said and what Mr. Hopkinson said. Because we are here to ensure that you get access to education. My wife and I were here last Christmas, as you know, we come Christmas time, and we are at a certain community along this river, and my wife gave a child a book, and the child held the book. She was 12. She said, Miss, I can't read. I'm here because of her. I'm here because another person who I see, where is he? I don't want to call names. Right behind me. He, he told me that he was spending about $5,000 a week to get his children from his grant to charity secondary school, his daughter. It is unconscionable. And that good man, I think, temporarily had to leave his farm 
to go and hustle one one penny weight in the gold field. I don't know who I can't remember who he is, man. I don't want points. I y'all may go and ask him some penny weights. But the point is that when I make these decisions, it's not because I'm politicking or I want to be popular. It is because people living in these communities, in Akawini, and Friendship, and Wakapau, because they tell me things, and I listen to them, and I go back and try to use your vote to work for you. So this vote that you get here today was inspired by the residents of the Pomeroon, and it will take place, ceremonies like this will take place in the Borbis River, in the Mazaruni River, in the Esequibo River, and elsewhere. But the idea came from the Pomeroon. We believe that every child deserves a place in school. I don't want to run into any more 12-year-old girls who said, Mr. I can't read. I do believe in the marrow of my bones, as Professor Narayan says, if every Guyanese child got access to education, we will be able to solve many of the developmental and economic problems facing this country. Just give the child access. Get that child in school. Get that child behind a computer. Get that child in the world of books. Get that child passing examinations. And we will not have so many social and economic problems in this country. That is what I want to see. I can't live forever. I want to make sure that the country you inherit is one that can guarantee a good life for all citizens. And if we're all educated, we could all become Professor Narines and get triplets. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, children of the Pomeroon Supernam region. We are met today at a very important ceremony, a ceremony that is celebrating education. It is celebrating the joy of being children, the importance of getting our children in school. We cannot take, look at these people in the head table, all of them over 18 years of age. <laughs> yes, it's, we cannot take this country, this region, where we are going. We have to hand it over to you. And if you are educated, you will be more capable of taking control of this country. Because one day you will be the head table. One day you will be talking about passing this beautiful region, this beautiful country, on to your children. So, thank you for coming out in your numbers. Thank you for participating in this important ceremony. Particularly, we must thank CGX and Professor Narayan for taking the initiative. But we want to make sure that the Pomeroon Supernam region is one of the most productive, one of the most bountiful regions in Guyana. Can we do it? Yes, yes, yes. May God bless you, Charity. May God bless you, Pomeroon Supernam. And I'll be here the next time I get a boat. Thank you, Charity.